the incredible impact of meal prep is undeniable. I am constantly amazed at the way meal prep has changed my life and the astounding impact from small habits that grow and grow to change everything. Imagine this, all of your meals are ready for a busy week ahead. No going to the grocery store to scrounge up dinner after a long day of work, no overspending on takeout or restaurant meals, no daily cooking or tiresome cleanup after you finish cooking, no exhaustion from trying to decide what to eat every single day multiple times a day. Well, for me, this is a reality. Welcome to my world. This is my meal prep perspective. I'm Lisa, a New Yorker who works in the health and fitness industry. Through nutrient-dense, high-protein meal prep, I fuel my active lifestyle without the constraints of food rules. Living in the hustle and bustle of NYC and working in the health and fitness industry, I found that meal prep provides the clarity I need to focus on what matters to me, helping people establish health-promoting behaviors. Join me and my meal prep for a busy week ahead. We'll start by going behind the scenes in my pre-meal prep routine. I'm kind of obsessed with my cold beer maker in my fridge. I swear by it. I love that it dispenses directly from the fridge. I'm using Irving Farm Coffee, which is a heritage NYC brand that I love, and this is their 71 house rose. I always keep this little cup underneath to confirm there won't be any surprise spills in the fridge. My favorite seltzer is also in the fridge. Have you ever tried this brand? Howl's is so delicious. The vanilla one's my favorite. It tastes exactly like cream soda, but the carbonation is out of this world. Okay, back to coffee. I'll add ice and my favorite coffee creamer. This one's from Chobani. I like this flavor a lot. It's really good, but my favorite one's just their sweet cream. This was hard to add on camera. I poured it a little more than I normally like, but we'll make it work. When I make coffee at home, I love the small detail of adding a reusable straw to make it feel like I've got a fun little drink. So we'll give it a stir. And also since this is cold brew concentrate, I'll add a splash of water just to even it out. Now that I've got my cold brew, I'll spend a few minutes checking my meal prep game plan. I've been doing this for a long time, but it's very helpful to have a rough outline of my steps or just list out everything I'll use so I don't forget one of the ingredients. That's part of the challenge when you don't use recipes, lol. Now that I'm happy with my order of operations and my menu, I'll start getting ready. I love cooking with an apron because I've ruined so many nice clothes over the years and this was a gift from my husband. He knew I wanted this one from Food52. It's got all the bells and whistles you can want in an apron and I'm kind of obsessed with it. I'll pull my hair back for obvious sanitation reasons and because I always get so hot when I'm cooking. And we're almost ready to begin. Next, I'll clear the counter off. If I wasn't filming this for all of you lovely people, I probably wouldn't clear the counter completely, but it does make it easier for filming. Once the counter is clear, I'll wipe it off and then get all of my meal prep containers out. This is where I keep all of my containers and my collection has grown and grown over the years, but they've also lasted years and years. So I store them closed because many of them have the dividers and they can't stack within one another. The containers themselves go directly into the oven, freezer, microwave, dishwasher, which was life-changing for me in terms of cooking flow and cleanup process. And because their glass are also a bit heavier and more delicate than the plastic ones, so just something to keep in mind. We've dropped a few over the years, but they've only broken when they've been like blatantly dropped. I'll link them and comment below if you'd like an alternative because I know these can be a big investment. Now I'm ready to begin cooking and I'll start by getting some white rice cooking in my rice cooker. And it's so helpful to have this little appliance to make meal prepping go by so much faster. I'm starting with my breakfast meal so I'll get out my sheet pan because I'm adding my meal prep containers to make bringing it in and out of the oven that much easier. I'll place the containers on top of my sheet pan and spray them with a little bit of olive oil. I'm using frozen peppers this week and I'm gonna mix in some egg whites after I cook the peppers for a bit. I find when to use frozen vegetables for breakfast in this way I need to cook the veggies first before I cook the egg whites or it'll get all kind of like watery and just be a little bit soggy for my taste. And as any of you returning subscribers know, I love cooking with frozen vegetables because they really remove a layer of complexity and price. They're pre-cut and less expensive than fresh, a win in my book. I'll add another spritz of olive oil on top and then into the oven they'll go. showing y'all another little behind the scenes clip this time with a big sip of water for this chef. Day to day I drink a ton of water and when I'm meal prepping I'm always hydrated because this is hard work. When I was younger I didn't used to love the taste of water but as I've started to engage in more health promoting behaviors over the years I find I'm constantly craving water. Now I'll start on part two for breakfast. I'm making protein carrot cake using tons of carrots and raisins too. My base recipe for this protein cake is on my blog and I'll add the link but trust me having this for breakfast will be something you'll actually look forward to. This recipe is very forgiving and flexible to what you have on hand. I'll start with my dry ingredients first, flour, baking powder, vanilla protein powder, and I'll mix them well, mostly so the baking powder is evenly distributed.
Then I'll follow with the spices that really make this something you'll be excited to eat every morning. I'll add in ground cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and cloves, and next time I make this, I'll definitely add in some fresh ginger too, because I'm always looking to just take it to the next level. Now I'll add my wet ingredients, starting with milk, then I'll add olive oil, eggs, and maple syrup. All of these can be substituted for other ingredients, which I do from time to time, or sometimes just completely omit, like sometimes I don't have eggs and I don't use them and it turns out just fine. So this is definitely my magic recipe that I come back to time and time again. Always a hit, and maybe part of that is because it doesn't feel like monotonous. So if you make this one week and you did carrot cake like I did, maybe the next week you're doing raspberry, and then it doesn't taste like you're repeating the same meal, but you kind of are. That's another little trick of mine. I get asked this question all the time and no, I never get sick of eating the same thing in a row day after day. I, would, I get sick of it if I ate it every single day, week after week. So the secret is just to change it up. Don't eat the same exact thing the next week. Sure, you'll have your favorites and your go-tos. And honestly, I would probably cook with less variety if I wasn't posting it online to share with you all. Like I'd probably repeat some of the same meals more often, but now I make a very conscious effort to make different types of meals, different things, different flavors, but I'm having so much fun doing it. As I was mixing this up, I realized it needed just a bit more liquid. So I've got my mix-ins, but I'm going to add some more liquid. I'm going to add some more milk. Once I got this all mixed, I realized this was definitely the texture I was looking for. Look at that, perfect. So I'll add my mix-ins. I'm gonna start with my raisins and then I'll add in my carrots as well. And both of these, I just say measure with heart. Add as many as would make you happy. And now we're talking, this beauty's ready to go in the oven. Of course, we'll do just a little taste test, you know, just make sure it's good and it's delicious. Thumbs up, chef's kiss, voila, parfait. And my batter's done just in time because my peppers are ready to come out of the oven. See how quick it is to pull all those containers out in one fell swoop? I've got two that don't fit on there, but that makes it so much easier than taking them out one by one. I'll spritz some more olive oil on top of my peppers and then I'll spray the larger side because that's where my carrot cake's going. But first, I'm gonna get my egg whites into my pepper side, so I'll shake them up and pour them in, portion them out, and I'll also add a little bit of feta cheese on top. I'll sprinkle some in, some crumbled feta, some salt and some pepper as well. Now that my egg whites are ready to go back into the oven, I'm gonna portion out my carrot cake and get these into the oven.
now that breakfast is in the oven we're gonna get started on the next meal i'm making which honestly was one of the best meals i've ever made my husband went on and on about how delicious it was and we both found ourselves looking forward to it i tried this out once before i wasn't sure how it would do for meal prep but let me tell you it was the perfect meal prep and I'm definitely making this again very soon. Have you guessed what I'm making yet? I'm making salmon sushi bake. I don't know about you guys, but I love sushi. It's a very hard thing to meal prep. I definitely wouldn't suggest it for meal prep. It'd just be hard for it to stay very well. Sushi is best when it's fresh. So this is kind of a way to get the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna start by steaming my fish. I put a little bit of olive oil down in the pan just so it didn't stick. I really didn't want it to be like glued to the bottom. So I'm gonna use my thermometer. I'm just checking. It's easy to tell when salmon's done. It gets flaky and it turns really white, but you know, I love a thermometer moment. So I'm gonna steam this up and I'll revisit this in a second. I'm coming back over to my counter and I'm gonna get started on the base for this. The salmon's gonna go in here eventually. We're gonna use cream cheese and QP mayonnaise. That's right, we got the good stuff. So we're gonna add our cream cheese in first and it's softened. It could have been a little softer in all honesty, but it definitely is softened. Once that's in the bowl, we're gonna get our QP mayo out too. I don't know if you've ever tried QP mayo. It's a type of Japanese mayo. It's known for tangy like umami flavor. Have you ever tried it? A friend got this for me at a local Japanese market in Brooklyn and it's been recommended to me so many times. I'm not a huge mayo lover, but I know this one is made with egg yolks instead of whole eggs like traditional American mayo, so it's said to have a richer, creamier texture. I think it's definitely what took this dish to the next level, so highly recommend if you're gonna make this one. I did my best to incorporate them well together, but I definitely should have softened my cream cheese just a little bit more, but you know, we got it done. So I'll check my salmon. It's all cooked, cooked all the way through, yay! And I'll bring it over the counter, let it cool a little bit, and we'll get it shredded and into the bowl with my cream cheese and QP mayo. After I gave it another stir, I realized it needed some more mayo in here based on how much salmon and how many meals I was making, so I added some more mayo and stirred it up. Next, I'll shred my salmon. It's almost all the way cooled off. You can probably still see it's very hot, but I'm gonna move it to a separate plate shred it up and then add it into my bowl. I left the skin out. I'm just not a huge fish skin girly. Uh, you can add it in if you want. I also decided to add in some cayenne pepper here. Uh, you know, I love spicy, spicy. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'll get my second piece of salmon shredded and into my bowl too. doesn't really look like much. It's not very pretty, but I promise this is gonna be the star of the show in just a few minutes. I've got my white rice out of my rice maker and I'm gonna get it portioned into my containers. In the meantime, my egg whites and carrot cakes are done, so I pulled them out of the oven and they're looking perfect. The thing we're adding next is furikake. This is a Japanese seasoning that is honestly very new for me and I'm kind of obsessed. It's so delicious. It's got little pieces of seaweed and sesame seeds and all kinds of good stuff. This one's one from Trader Joe's, but next time I'm definitely gonna buy it one from the Japanese market just to try out some of the OGs. I'm layering this on top of my rice and I'm gonna sprinkle a generous amount so I didn't have enough in my hand. So I'll add some more on top and I can't wait for y'all to try this. Even if you don't like salmon, if you're like the cream cheese mayo salmon things not for you, please try furikake. It's so good if you even remotely like seaweed you're gonna love that and next we're gonna layer on our cream cheese mayo salmon mixture right on top of the rice and furikake we'll make sure it's spread out evenly and then we'll be ready for the next layer
And next we're gonna add some hot sauce. If I had sriracha, I definitely would have used it. This is Frank's Red Hot and I thought it was great. So if I had gochujang, I definitely would have used that too. That would have been delicious. So I'll do some of the hot sauce and then some of the mayo on top too. And I'll sprinkle some furikake on top just to top it off. I also decided to add a few more sesame seeds. I have tons of sesame seeds. So I'm kind of looking to use them up in some ways. These beauties are all done. You can get a view from the side, a view from the top, and I'll show you how I served it. This roasted seaweed has a little bit of sea salt. This one's from Trader Joe's. It's good. Again, could look for a very authentic one. Absolutely. I'll do that next time. I reheated this in the microwave. You'll see later I add some scallions on top as like a topping, but I'm going to serve this with, I'm going to scoop it up and put it directly onto my seaweed. And then I'm adding a little slice of cucumber and that's it how cute are these and really the best way to serve these would be to keep the seaweed separate and the cucumber separate from the sushi bake right until you're going to eat it and really this was such a fun lunch i can't wait to make it again i probably said that five times now but it was so delicious crispy crunchy got some you know different textures going on really absolutely could not recommend it more and it's funny for me because i grew up in the midwest where basically anything and everything can become a casserole so this really feels like something similar to what I might have grown up eating, but it's like a Japanese, you know, like another take on a casserole, really. And of course, every culture has their version of all of their foods, but sometimes as I'm cooking these different things, I realize we're more similar than we are different. And I love that. I love the way cooking can bring us together in that way. And the way we'll finish these off is by throwing them into the oven to roast quickly. This step is definitely, I guess in theory, you could do this the day of if you wanted to. If you wanted to warm it up like that and just not bake it at all yet, I'm sure that would work. Now you've got options. While those are roasting, I'm going to transfer my breakfast onto my counter. So I put my towel down just out of pure paranoia. I'm always so worried that it might ruin my counter and that would just be so devastating. And now we're on to the final meal. I'm going to get out my cutting board. I'm going to slice up some onions, but I'm going to get some help. I've been looking for a way to make my life just a little bit easier to make meal prep go just a little bit faster. And I think I finally found it. I'm honestly not sure why I haven't had one of these before, but welcome to my new little chopper. I am so excited to use this thing literally i feel like it's like life changing so I, right now the one the setting that i have it on is the dice i learned a lot about using this and using it properly and i realized the best way to make it work most efficiently is to really kind of like hammer it shut to kind of like move everything through but this little gadget saved me so much time chopping onions once i got the hang of it i'm obsessed and i can tell this is gonna make its debut in many many more cooking videos to come because it was just so easy so fast and again i kind of had to get the hang of it first but could not recommend it more if you're just trying to make meal prep go just a little bit faster a little bit more efficient and also if you have any type of disability where chopping things is really hard for you this would be literally life-changing now we're going to be really careful when we take the blade out here if we're switching it out or we're rinsing it out because it's incredibly sharp so ten cuidado be careful so promise me you'll do that part with caution now Next, I'm going to be browning some ground turkey and ground chicken and some olive oil. So now that that's hot on the pan, definitely don't dump it in like that one-handed filming, y'all danger. Uh, I also noticed that my sushi bake is done. So that came out of the oven and I had some frozen scallions. So I sprinkled those on top and that meal all done. Now that my turkey and chicken are cooked, I'm going to use my same pan, add some olive oil and add those onions that I just chopped up rather quickly. Stir those around and then I'm going to dice up my jalapeno. I put it on to the really fine dice. This is a little bit smaller than the onions. Cautiously adding that here. I kind of learned, yeah, I got to slam it a little more and look at that. I love jalapenos, but cutting them up and avoiding the seeds and then avoiding touching your face or, you know, anything for hours afterwards is kind of a bit of a pain. So this little chopper did the trick here too. Into my onion mixture, I'm going to add some minced garlic and then I'll remove that from the pan. Next, I'm going to thaw some frozen chopped spinach. It's going into the microwave to thaw and then into the sink, I'm thawing my artichoke hearts. These I'm going to thaw under cold water and in a colander. Once I'm happy that they're thawed enough, I'm going to shake out the excess moisture and then add them into my pan. My spinach is thawed as well and I'm going to use some cheesecloth to squeeze out all this excess moisture. 
took some finagling, a little tough to do one-handed, but you get the idea, right? Squeeze out that moisture. One more green item we're gonna add here. We're gonna thaw some broccoli in the microwave and we'll also then check on those artichoke hearts. See how that sauteing is going. I decided that I wanted to add just a little bit of that moisture back in now that they're sauteed. They've got some brown color onto them. So add a little bit of water, put the lid on, and then I'll grab my broccoli out. I'll do a little check on my artichokes. I'm really happy with how they're looking right now. I'll give them a stir, really make sure every little piece is cooked well. And then I'm gonna add in my broccoli. I'm gonna do this carefully, it's hot, but I'm gonna make these broccoli pieces really, really small and fine and shred them into this. Again, hard to do one-handed, so I skipped ahead, got it done, and I'll give it a stir. I'll remove that out of the pan and now we're gonna hop over to the blender. We're gonna add my most favorite cottage cheese into this blender. I'm obsessed with this cottage cheese. If you've subscribed for a while, you've seen this before. It's the best one and cottage cheese is really having its moment. So into my pan goes my frozen spinach that was thawed and I wrung all the water out and then I'm gonna pour in that cottage cheese that's all blended and creamy. I'll also add in a few wedges of laughing cow cheese and as it warms, it'll break them down and it'll be in this really pretty spinach dip. Woo! We're gonna add in our cheese here too. We're gonna sprinkle it in. It'll kind of melt and get creamy and delicious and we'll save some to sprinkle on top too. I haven't added any salt to this mixture yet. I always do that, like to do that after the cheese, especially because those cheeses can be really salty. So I gave it a taste test, added some salt to taste and some fresh ground black pepper. I stirred it up to incorporate and now I'm coming over to my big bowl where I have my other things waiting for me. In here already are my artichokes, my shredded broccoli, and then I'm adding in my onions, garlic, and my ground chicken, ground turkey mixture too. So everything is getting stirred up and really ready to become high protein spinach and artichoke dip. And as soon as I poured this in, I definitely realized it was not enough of our creamy, creamy mixture to cover all of this goodness. So I stirred it up as best I could so I had an idea of how much more I needed to add. But see, it looks a little bit dry. I don't want it to look like that. So I'm gonna add some more cottage cheese and some more laughing cow and I'll blend those up very quickly. That's me, problem solver gal get this fixed. I really could have served it as it was. It just wasn't, I just knew it wasn't as great as it could be. And I wanted it to be great. So we adapted, we added some more, we blended it up. We're pouring this extra creamy sauce on top and it's gonna turn out incredible. Just wait. As soon as I started stirring this up, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I was going for. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to taste because I added some more of that cheese sauce and it's not super salty. So I'm adding some more salt and I'll stir it up really well. And now it's time to get it portioned into our containers, yay! And if you remember, we saved some of that cheese from before, so we're gonna sprinkle a little bit on top of here as well. Oh no, I'm not done with the toppings. So after I put the cheese on there, I also wanted to add just a little bit of lemon zest, to kind of give this some brightness that I feel like it otherwise was missing. And of course, don't forget about our little jalapenos. I'll sprinkle some of those on top and voila, that's it, look at that high protein and healthy spinach and artichoke dip. I'll get this portioned into all of my containers, top them all off, and we are almost at the end. Look at these beautiful meals. I'm so proud of this. I'm so proud of meal prepping and I'm so proud of accomplishing this every single week. You can probably tell I'm a little bit biased toward meal prepping, but meal prep isn't just a routine for me. It's really a passion and I believe in sharing my authentic journey, offering all of my insights into my process and learning alongside all of you incredible people. I love empowering others through preventative health practices that make a big impact and lead to improved health outcomes. I'm so thankful you're here with me and I'll see you again next week.